Asia. <laughs> You've been on a winning streak since becoming the WNBA's number one draft pick for the Las Vegas Aces. She led the Aces to become the first team in 20 years to score back-to-back -back wins. Woo. 2022 and 2023. Now, Aisha wrote this book. <laughs> it's very personal, it's very poignant, and it's called Dear Black Girls, How to Be True to You. Please welcome two-time MVP, Aisha Wilson. So, congrats on the book. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that you went for years not knowing you were dyslexic. Yeah. See, they didn't have a word for it when I was a kid, but they had a word and they didn't and still didn't know. Yeah. So, how do you feel about being the author <laughs> of your book? Yes. <laughs> I. I truly feel amazing because if you would tell 12-year-old, 6-year-old Asia that she would be an author and she would write a book, she would laugh because she's like, I have, I'm, I have a learning disability and it's hard for me to navigate the world at some times. But now watching it and reading it and watching everyone else read it, I'm like, I'm so glad I wrote it I was because I feel like I'm a testimony to it. Like, yes. you can literally do whatever you put your mind to. And it's cliche yeah. and we say that. Yeah. But, like, this is real. Like, I poured my heart out into it. Yeah. And to see people, like, pour themselves back into me, I, it's, I'm forever grateful for this. So, oh. yeah, it's a big moment. That's great. <laughs> nice to see you, sis. Yes. Nice to yes. see you. Yes. Thank you. Well, in your book, uh, you surprisingly say you weren't a natural on the court, despite yeah. the fact that you were ranked number one in high school, helped bring the yeah. University of South Carolina their first NCAA title. You're a two-time WNBA MVP. Everything would be rattled off. But you describe yourself as the queen of mediocre. Yes. Why did you want to share that? And what? Yeah, doesn't I sound true. Like, yeah, Why did I thought I was? What did you? <laughs> you what did you want, young girl? You're a gold medal winner. You're an Olympian. Yeah. You're an Olympian. Yeah. Yeah, but I wasn't always that. You know, I feel like, and especially in the book, I kind of tell the story so young people can know. I, you don't come out the womb perfect. And you have times where you have to work through it and you're gonna face adversity, but you can always get to where you wanna to get to. I absolutely hate it to sweat. I can't stand it. <laughs> now I sweat for a living. <laughs> so like, it's just one of those things where you just really kind of just learn yourself and you love yourself. And I think that's where I became from mediocre to now, I wanna be great. I wanna be legendary. And I love that. My resume, starting to show it. Yeah. Uh, I still got a little bit more work to do, but yeah, it's been, I like being mediocre because I, I felt normal for once. I felt like I had to go through the struggle. I always say I had to touch the stove to know that it's hot a yeah. little bit. So um, I was so glad that I could have that moment. <laughs> you know, we have a lot in common. I don't like to sweat either. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And Why do we sweat? She's your height. She's I do. I think, <laughs> I think I'm about we're similar height. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'm a member, as you know, of the WNBA Board of Advocates. Um, I'm so proud of that. And uh, you are my fellow soror. Hello, <laughs> AKA. Um, you're a superstar. Uh, in my view, you became an outspoken critic of the gender pay gap when you famously <laughs> tweeted this about how much LeBron James was making in 2018, writing, $154 million must be nice. We over here looking for a mill, but Lord, let me get back in my lane. Right. <laughs> um, you got a lot of people talking about that, and, and you say it actually helped you find your voice. Yes. How did so? you get more money? That's another question. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the other question. <laughs> We're still working on it, and I feel like that was just, like, the growth of it. <laughs> but I really found my voice because I, I felt like I finally used my platform and knew that people were listening and encouraging me to continue to speak out on things that I believe in, that I live. And that's also why I wanted to write the book, because it gives people a dive into that side of life. Like, they see us in uniform, think we're perfect, think we have it going on, but in actuality, we have struggles. Yes. We have to speak up for what we believe in, because we have to be on platforms like this, because a lot of people don't see me like that. And I always yeah. say, if you can see her, you can be her. Representation matters. We have to be seen in these spaces, awesome. getting a seat at the table. Yeah. So doing that as a young rookie, it kind of opened up a whole nother door for me that I'm like, okay, no, wait, people are listening to me. So let me, let me talk a little something since I got their attention. So yeah, that was a big moment for Asia. Well, Asia, you mentioned struggles and you've been really open about yeah. your struggles with anxiety and depression. Yeah. And you had a hard time after losing your grandma and experienced your first panic attack after winning MVP in 2020. Um, why was it so important for you to share those specific hardships? 
Because I feel like it's taboo, particularly in the black community. I feel like it's mm -hmm. something, one of those things where it's like, oh, nothing's wrong with you, girl. Go lay down. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, 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 something's wrong with me. Right, yeah. And being okay with saying that, being okay with saying that I don't feel good, feel those feelings out. Mm -hmm. And like I said, a lot of people may see me on the court and they're like, she's wonderful at what she does. And and she granted, I am, you know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that. But at the same time, I have days where I don't want to get out of bed. I'm yeah. just like, I just don't want today, like right now. Yeah. So I think it was health, uh, like healthy for me to share with my audience, with my friends, my family fans, that like, I, I'm human, I'm real, I have my days. Uh, but at the same time, I wake up and I'm good. Girl, <laughs> listen, you are more than good. Yes, okay. yes. And I think you have to, you come back and hang with us. <laughs> Our thanks to Asia Wilson. Her book, Dear Black Girls, How to Be True to You, is out now.